How Cities of America are very careless and neglectful because they, they didn't really took our, our situation seriously as it should be. It is like hearsay and, and, and whatever, you know. How Cities of America, I really would not recommend to anybody and it is, it's a nightmare. The pictures that they have in there, at least for this person that came over here, is not the person that came. Uh, it's a, it shows a young person and, and, you know, the person who came over here, it was just really a homeless person. Very old, homeless and drunk. That uh, These house eaters of America should not be doing that. They are allowing this to, to, to happen. They are allowing it. I will let my husband, since my uh, English is my second language, I, I let my husband tell you quickly. That's fine. Not a problem. Thank you. All right. We were going on a trip out of the country, and we contacted House Sitters America to uh, you know, find somebody to watch the house, because normally we have our neighbors and stuff do it, but we figured this is going to be three weeks. That's a little extra for the neighbors to be handled. You know. So contacted them, set everything up, found somebody on there who was willing to do it uh, months in advance. We're, we're talking to her on and off for months. Everything seemed good. Uh, she hadn't done uh, any other sits with them before, but she had one sit that she was doing right before she came to us. All right. So we had it set up. She was supposed to come in about three days in advance. She showed up two days in advance, but the, and the, but the two days in advance, it was really late, the second day in advance. She came late at, late at night. From the opposite direction from where she said she was coming from, which I thought was odd anyway, but kind of let that go. And then on top of that, she claimed she was sick. So went up to the room we gave her and pretty much didn't come down at all until we left. I mean, we, we got her to come down once or twice just briefly, but then she had to go back upstairs because she wasn't feeling good. We offered to take her to the hospital, and she said she didn't need to. So pretty much she was completely, I felt, I felt, and my neighbors that wanted to come meet her, uh, we felt that she truly was avoiding us. But we thought, okay, maybe she's not feeling good, but I mean, we're ready to leave, and you need to see, even though I wrote a detailed manual, I still need you to see what we need to do because you don't have any experience with fish or, or birds or cats. And that's what we have. So yeah. she says, oh, I'm not feeling good. I'm not feeling good. I don't need to go to the hospital. And I, I, will, I will get to see you before you leave. So finally, the day we were leaving, we get her to come downstairs because she's got to move her car so we can get our vehicle out to go get pick, pick up a rental car and get everything switched over so we can go to the airport. So we get her to come downstairs and we get her to go at least see what we do with the animals briefly. Okay. Give her the manual. She takes notes in the manual and, and videos some of the stuff we're doing. So we figured, okay, at least she's, you know, got an idea of what she's supposed to do. She took pictures too, supposedly, and, right. and, and short videos. The very little she interacted with us uh, when she was there, she, you know, was making sure to assure us that, you know, she didn't drink, she, you know, she doesn't snoop, she, you know, she has experience with animals, just not with birds. So, you know, but the manual was good enough to explain to her what we needed her to do. So everything was supposed to be fine. We go out of the country and I try to keep in contact with her on chat as much as possible. But I'd send her a chat and wouldn't hear anything for two days. And then she'd reply to the message I'd send her. Nothing in detail, just a, a yes or a no. Yeah. Is everything okay? And when finally she replied, it was yes. Uh, not, yeah. Nothing, I, I was not feeling really good anymore there. Okay. The day we were leaving, we called, or we didn't call, we, we texted her that, you know, we would be back uh, the next day at a certain time. And she goes, oh, well, I got to go that morning. The day, the day we were leaving um, our vacation, coming back home. Yeah. So uh -huh. she was leaving before we were even leaving the other country. And I was like, uh, you were supposed to stay a couple days after, and so that way you had time to get to, well, I have a camping trip I have to go on. And so, we're like, okay. Well, 
about that time, we I'd sent a text to another, you know, one of our neighbors who was taking care of the animals before and has a key. And he goes, uh, did she tell you about the lost cat? So like, uh, no. <laughs> yeah. So pretty much she lost, she lost two of our cats. Uh, my next door neighbor found one at her door, brought it back. She was not here at all. And, and the animals or pets, I say the animals, but the fish, everything was not fed. And she brought uh, one of our cats back. The other one was completely lost. Uh, okay. But this yeah. this has been the newest one that we had acquired. And she was still kind of uh, skittish and nervous about things sometimes. And she got really scared. She hid out in the catio underneath this ledge. Um, well, because apparently the cats were escaping from the catio, she had blocked off access to the catio, essentially locking this cat out on the catio for a week while we were gone. Okay. As soon as I came home, I found the cat right where I thought it was going to be, underneath the ledge. If she would have told us this a week before when the cat had gotten lost to begin with, <laughs> and, and actually, just something really quick. In in since she wasn't coming out, my daughters uh, who are not living here with us, they are grown up. They wanted to meet through through Skype to meet her and let her know that if she had any questions, that something were to happen, to, she refused to to meet with them. She refused to meet my neighbors anyhow. Uh, the day the night before we were leaving. Since I saw that she was refusing to meet us at all with us and, and know what we have to do in our house and everything else, I start quickly putting uh, little notes everywhere in the house. This light it works. Um, this light is for outside. You know, this toilet flushes this way. The animals, you know, everywhere in the house. And then um, I call uh, in the manual. I put also, you know, all the telephones uh, from our a specialist avian vet in case something were to happen. Uh, my neighbor was offering that to take is is like an hour and a half away this avian vet. So if something were to happen to our birds, my neighbor was offering to to run down with the bird if something were needed. We have other friends around town that were willing to help her if she ever needed anything. Nobody was ever contacted for except anything. Except for except for the one guy when oh, the yeah. cat was when the cat was lost. He's the one that helped her try to fix the catio because and, uh -huh. and I'll, I'll get to that later. <laughs> and it was but, coming to feed. Uh, he knew that the cat should have been there because the food he was placing out for her, um, it was being eaten, and any of the kitties on the you outside, know in the neighborhood could, yeah. couldn't enter in there. Uh, this woman didn't even care at all. So okay. we ended up being stuck in Chicago an extra night. So when we finally get back, first thing I do is I go downstairs and I find the cat. My wife comes into the house and looks around and goes, what the hell? Yeah. I, the the yes. place was trashed. I mean, there was, looked like tomato sauce from the, from the uh, refrigerator all the way over I mean, to the, the stove. We have three floors. Okay. The basement, which is a, a full basement and where our birds and cats are. Then the first floor and then our second floor. Um, I am really extremely exaggerated cleaning the house at all times. So I left this house in perfect condition. And I'm saying really perfect condition because I take care of my house. And I am so proud that just right before we were uh, leaving, uh, I finished some artwork around the house. Um, you know, I like to do arts. So I left many things uh, just really done a new many things were new i was very proud of my house two days before this woman supposed to arrive my daughter my older daughter told me please take me through through the whatsapp uh, through the video call and show me all the things that you guys have been doing to the whole house and thank goodness we did so she got to see everything when we arrived here at the moment i opened the door uh, believe me i already noticed that something was not right it was trash it, 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 it was trash, mud, litter all over the house. It was my whole house from the basement to the top. It, it was a big mess. I found, we went into the to the bathroom here on the first floor. Um, as soon as I turned on the light, I immediately saw some gloves, latex gloves with hair dye, black. 
en Black Day Stain Our Saints, our Facebook, sink, our, explore. everything, our new, our new, brand new, um, what is the thing around the, the baseboard, the, the baseboard, completely stained. Um, I was able to clean the, was, the sink and the floor, but I cannot get the, the, the dye out of the, uh, the blonde woodwork. It's, it's permanently you know, stained. You know, we were, we were in this long, long trip on the plane, uh, about first on the train, then on the plane, then staying overnight. We we are not sleeping. We are really tired. We are already worried that our cat is missing. And we come over here and find all this trash. I, you know, I start cleaning. And later, when I start cleaning the bathroom, I thought, you know what, I, I, I should have taken pictures of all this before I even touch anything. This was unbelievable. The, the shower, uh, where the gloves were there with the dye still all, all running all over the, the shower floor. From then on, the kitchen yeah, and the brand new, everything. Brand new range that I put in two days before we left, stainless steel range, she had scratched. I mean, all over. I, mean, it was like, I don't know if she tried using steel wool or something to know. clean up the sauce she'd spilled all over the place or what, but I mean, it was scratched. There were a couple places where it was gouged. You know, and I, like I said, I put that in two days before we left. The refrigerator, I, don't, I honestly, I don't know what she did. I myself at that moment was going through the rooms and start seeing what, what, we, what went in here. I mean, what, why everything is open? Why the drawers are open? What, I, I was found, going crazy. We found furniture that was from one floor on another Jeez. floor. We found linens piled up in, in, the living room that were Everywhere. supposed to be upstairs in the and the outside the bathroom. I mean, it was like she just rearranged everything. We found the TV turned completely around in the living room, facing away from everything. And in the process, she lift that lift or ripped out the uh, digital audio cable, the you know the the light ones. And it's just just all just it, it random was... ridiculous stuff. The only thing that I, you know, I was thinking we were going to find stuff missing, but the only thing that I noticed missing was cleaning supplies, 11 rolls of toilet paper, and some towels. And, and like I said, that just didn't make sense. I never found any sign that anything else had been stolen. Yeah. Just these items were just no longer here. Uh, we, we came late at night. Anyhow, uh, we, I stopped whatever cleaning I was doing, and I went downstairs just to check on all the animals. Um everything up apparently seemed okay right when i go to see where the feeding station for our cats are it was a bag ripped open when i am uh, i have placed dishes for everybody i know how to feed them you know they have a routine uh, everything was in detail on the manual well, we have a bag ripped open just left in there uh, for them to feed just out of the bag and then Three cans for three weeks, three cans of soft food, just open, not even put in the dishes as I asked in the manual to do. Just as, as she never went down there to do anything, just to open whatever and leave them in there. Um, uh, we were so tired. We were not feeling sick because we came from, from a place that was really hot. And when we arrived to Chicago, it was snowing. And we didn't have jackets or anything. So already we were targeting uh, sick. Um, we stopped everything there. We saw the animals. At least everybody was alive, just the one missing. And, but I found that one, and so. my husband found it later on, late night, and we went to sleep. In the next morning, we well, started. No. Up. I, when I got upstairs, because I went upstairs to start taking oh. some stuff upstairs, I heard water run. Couldn't yes. figure out why there was water running. I go into the bathroom and the toilet which we had specific instructions for her. I, you know, you've got to be careful because the chain slips off. If the chain slips off, just open the, the top up and make sure that the um, stopper is in, in, the, in the tank so the water stops running. Who knows how long she left it running, but our water bill was three times as high for the time period she was here than it has been any other, any other month or any other year we've ever lived here, okay, for one person. <laughs> Not only that, but the is, lid of the toilet yes. was on sideways. The plunger was in the toilet tank. There was toilet paper oh. stuffed in the toilet and tank, the, and, and dirty, the water dirty. was just running nonstop because she'd left the 
the stopper off and the chain off. So, and we also noticed about that time that all the throw rugs from from our bedroom on the you know the middle set of stairs all the way up the steps into the bathroom were no longer where they were supposed to be. And these are some of the linens and stuff we found downstairs in the living room. Um, and there was stuff just thrown inside the tub. And the bathtub also in the ba- stain. Yeah. It took me, it, it took us actually days and days to be really cleaning that bathtub. It was a stain. It was horrible. My, my, my two new uh, covers in our bedroom were, were new, were new. And when we entered that bedroom, it was candy wrappers, food everywhere, crumbs everywhere, and my two new duvets. Looked like she had completely stained in black and wax, and I don't know yeah, what I is. I don't know what I she's. Mean, it looked like she had spilled sauce on them. Looked like she'd spilled black candle wax did. on them. I mean, it's it's they're they're ruined. She, and she she she, she actually admitted to that one that she had spilled some sauce on them. In the court, finally, yeah. Yeah, but uh, you know, so at this point we went to bed, but I contacted um, House Sitters America to tell them about this, and they're like, "Oh, we're sorry this happened, but uh, if you want to file an official complaint, um, you know, send us the information, and we'll contact her about this." And you know, we're sitting here at this point, just kind of like. Because there's no there's no recourse on house sitters to even put a review on a house sitter. There's no review mechanism, nothing. So we were just kind of like, okay. So I, I sent them I sent them complete information on everything that happened. Their response was, okay, well we're going to contact the house sitter now and see what her side of the story is. I'd send them pictures and everything. We're going to contact the house sitter to see what her side of the story is. As the days were passing by, we are finding more you know we have a quite a big house uh, then feeling ill and everything we start you know what let's go room by room to see what this this monster did to our house and every single room every single room was something a mess everything moved things things not in place a, a stainless stove uh i you could tell she'd gone through every drawer, every yes. little box in the house. Just, you know, but like anything. I said, we couldn't see that she took anything other than, like I said, the cleaning supplies and the towels, you know, but she had went through everything, you know, and she even admitted that later in court that, oh, yeah, yeah, well, I, I did go looking around and she was, but obviously I didn't take anything because you left money sitting there on on, the, on your desk and, and you're, you got gold coins in this drawer over here and, and none of those was taken. And I'm sitting here like, and you didn't snoop? <laughs> it was, anyhow, uh, as they were passing by, uh, we were feeling up to checking even outside on our on, on our garden. Is when we found um, where the cats were coming out, which has never, ever been out of there. But this time, how they, they were escaping. How they were escaping. There was a... All our plants smashed, yeah. everything. So... We put together these, these. Well, that comes later, though. Yeah. That comes later. What the, but I mean, yeah. he, he had, she had messed up the stuff outside. She messed up the area where we have our uh, little like garden pavilion that you know we can sit and stuff. Broken I mean, planters. It was, yeah, it was just trashed. Um, and about that time was when I was also you know taking the trash out and stuff, and I went I went to move the recycling bin, mm. and when I opened up the recycling bin, it was full of alcohol bottles. Vodka, wine. So apparently she was drinking pretty heavily every night, or she must have been having people come over one or the other, because if she was drinking that much, she is a serious alcoholic. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Yeah, for three, that was much. After contacting house sitters, they're saying that the only recourse that we have is if we go, if we go through legal proceedings against her because... All they are is an agency to put us in contact with each other. They hold take no responsibility for anything that happens with their uh, sitters. And if there's uh, any complaints, then it goes into a file that they have that nobody else can see. And if they have more than one, then that person can be removed from their site. By this time, we I told my husband, you know what? We are 
we are sick and tired of all this. Every day we find something else. Just, just, just let it go. Just forget about the whole thing. She came to destroy our house. That's it. And, and when we came yeah. to that conclusion, all of a sudden I get mm. a email from her demanding a positive review for her so she can have a uh, uh, I can't remember what they're called on there but she, she can put this letter on her site showing that you know we were so happy with her services and if she didn't get one of those and she might have to go and com or tell the uh, animal agency here that you know we were neglectful to our animals so I took that as kind of a threat at that point you know so I'm like uh I didn't even respond to her. I just forwarded that email to house sitters and said, look, do something with her. We were leaving this alone. Here she is. She's demanding that we say she's such a wonderful house sitter and she took wonderful care of her animals. She lost one. Two, actually, but the mm -hmm. neighbor brought the first one back, you know, and wonderful care of her house. She trashed it. So we were, you know, they didn't do anything. They wouldn't do anything, you know, and. We were just, we calmed down again. We were just getting ready to relax and Hold on. leave everything alone. And all of a sudden, in the middle of the night, we hear crash. Oh, gosh. Our entire living room ceiling on one side came down. It's a it's a, um, a suspended ceiling. Yeah, we, we okay. can show you. Um, uh, it's where the bathroom upstairs is. It's where it had started, and it was a cascade effect. Where it had started is one of the uh, pole or the connections onto the ceiling above right underneath where the toilet was pulled out because apparently she had flooded that toilet a couple times from the set from the looks of it and it weakened where that was holding and then when that one came down it pulled it all the way down the rest of the way down that row okay fortunately i'll be able to fix most of that but that was something that we had a room we had just redone recently um, the hole is still there yeah i, I have to I was waiting for it to warm up to be able to fix that. So I'm like, what the hell? So I started looking at everything and I checked out underneath the toilet because I could see where the hole was there. And going in there and I could real I realized what had happened. That she had flooded that room a couple times. That's why all the floor mats and and well, gone. rugs and everything had been pulled out. She probably grabbed a bunch of the towels that were missing now and used that to clean it up and instead of washing them or anything, had thrown them away. That's why they're missing. The 11 rolls of toilet paper, more than likely, it fell down into this water. So she threw them away. You know, she probably used a bunch of the cleaning supplies to try to clean up and the mess she and made. Right there, her, where she threw it away, exactly fell down on the top of the cat. You where the cats, so something because ripped the heaviness, ripped the, the, the mesh that we the had mesh, across the top of the cat. That's how they were. Uh, that's how the Coming smallest out, of the cats was getting out through the top of that mesh because she had probably dropped everything out the window to take to the yeah. trash can instead of taking it down the stairs. And at that's that time, what opened them. At that time, uh, my daughter was just, you need to sue her. And we are, you know what? We don't have to we, we, you know, forget it. But anyhow, we decide we're going to let all go. Uh, then, two she days later, us again. we receive a certified mail that either... We give her 100% um, positive, positive theater or review or she will. Uh, or she's going to sue us for defamation of character and slander because of the uh, reviews that we put on your site and other sites. So finally, I told my husband, you know what? I told you from the time we find out this, that you need to call the police and make a report and you didn't. So this is the time to do it. So we did it. We took the report, and then I told my husband, you know what, we need to do something about it because she's going to be threatening us, and I am afraid one of the that, that she's going to come down and do something to one us. One of the things she said in the last letter was that she would be back in Illinois. So at that point, we decided yes. my wife would get an order of protection, so she had to stay away from us. That's where the court proceedings came in. She tried bringing all this stuff up in court. All we were trying to do was bring up the fact that she had contacted us twice, threatening us, and we wanted nothing to do with this. She tries to bring all that up in court, so we, we went ahead and brought all that up in court. That's how the court proceedings came about, where she admitted to certain things and all that. But, because it wasn't a physical threat, the judge said, no, there, we can't order, issue an order of protection. So, we're still sitting here waiting to see if she's going to try filing a defamation of character slander lawsuit against us. Or, or abuse to our yeah. animals or whatever. Yeah. And hoping she's not going to show back up here. 
don't unless they completely change their the format of how they're doing things and allow the homeowners to have some kind of feedback on what happens with the house and, sitters don't and and also also uh, something very important they really if they are going to put their name and and tell people oh yes this person can go they really need to check this this people completely who they are if they are who they say they are where do they live whatever they cannot be just allowing anybody to to come do trash in other people's houses this is this is not fair 